case you missed the memo, Euro nymphing is the hottest thing to hit fly fishing in a generation. It's a super effective short line nymphing method that's ridiculously effective. And my mate Steve Peach is a big fan. Recently, Peachy took a little time out of his day on the water to give me a beginner's lesson in Euro nymphing. So what I'm doing here is uh, European nymphing. This is a fairly short line situation. I've got a weighted nymph on the point of the line here with a tungsten bead. I've got about six feet of uh, very fine tippet. And then I've got what's called a sighter, which is this colored material here that allows me to see the line. And that's my indicator, basically. So what I'm doing when I'm casting upstream, I'm letting the nymph drift down and I'm watching that sighter for it to tighten and uh, or, or to stop or move in an unusual way and then I set the hook and strike and it'll either be the bottom, a rock or it'll be a fish. So I'm just doing, casting a lot of very short drifts, the flies in the water almost all the time and if, if something happens or I get to the end of the drift then I just do set the hook and cast again and place it up there. Now it's really important with this that um, you manage the rod tip and you manage the line carefully. What you want to have is just a slight controlled amount of slack in the line. If I throw it in like that and I pull it along so I'm tight to the fly then it's dragging and I'm not getting a natural grip. But if I cast in like that and I'm not tight to the line and it's like that then I've got no strike indication. So what I've got to do with my left hand is manage the line between my left hand and the rod tip just to keep it very smooth and keep a controlled amount of slack. So the fly is drifting down naturally, but if something touches the fly, I'm going to see it on the indicator. The casting uh, with this is uh, it's basically an oval cast. You're casting underneath and then over the top of the fly. Um, that gets the flies to sink nicely, and it also avoids you crashing the nymph into the rod can do a bit of damage as you imagine. It's really important to just get control of the drift as soon as the fly hits the water. You don't want to be mucking around with all of this slack in the line and then trying to pull the indicator up or anything like that. You want to keep the indicator out of the water uh, and above the water basically from the beginning of the drift. If you could be in contact with the fly as soon as it hits the water then you're going to get a lot more fish. Um, because you'd be surprised how many times you get a take as soon as the fly in with the water or in that first second of drift. So your line management with your left hand here is really important. You notice I've got the line under my finger and with this hand I'm just drawing up a little bit of slack and I'm moving the rod tip very slowly back and just leading the drift. I'm not dragging the fly, I'm just staying ahead of it. Steve then kindly handed me his Euronymphing rig for a bit of on-water training. So if you can imagine, if you watch the end of your sighter, mm. whatever your sighter is doing, if it's moving up and down, yeah, then your nymphs are doing the same thing. That's why it's really important with your, with your uh, drift to just get that rod tip smooth and get the whole drift as smooth as you can as soon as you can. Mm. So that you're not, you're not pulling the fly up and down in the water column. Yeah, great. That's very good. Yep. It looked like one, didn't it? Yeah, it was. Really? Yep. Yes. That was up high in the water. That yep. Is, that, what you were saying. <laughs> yeah, really early in the drift. Oh, early in the drift? Yep. I would have missed that on my earlier casts because I was letting the cider fall on the water. Yeah, absolutely. It felt great to get a fish almost straight away and while I clearly still have a lot to learn, especially in terms of casting and line control, I was already hooked as firmly as that lively little rainbow trout. <laughs> Woo, hopefully the first of many on the Euronym. Hold on mate.
Euro nymphing has a bit of a reputation for catching lots of small fish, but don't worry, it produces big trout as well. Alright. Good fun, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. My second hookup came almost immediately. Yeah. Nice. You saw that take? We really? did. Interestingly, I fished this same stretch with a traditional dry fly and nymph dropper without touching a fish. Yet here we were, hooking one after another on the Euro nymphing gear. There's got to be a lesson in that. <laughs> I think so. See how far we've come from the car? Yeah. And we've caught more fish than I've catch for a whole day on the dry nymph. Yep. Lovely. Mm -hmm. oh, beautiful little rainbow. Mm -hmm. I spent another half an hour or so fishing with Peachy's gear and I found it really engaging. It'll take me a while to get my head around that casting, but once my fly was in the water, I could feel just how effectively I was fishing. I caught several more fish. And while none of them were big, they were all great fun on that gear. It'll take me a while to reach Peachy's level of proficiency, but it's a journey I'm looking forward to. Be sure to check out Peachy's YouTube channel for a lot more detail and if you search Euro Nymphing you'll find a whole world of online resources. But be warned, it's highly addictive. <laughs> Tight lines. <laughs>